Well, good morning, hello. Uh, my name is Clara Widrig, and I would like to welcome you to the Sedgwick Museum of Earth Sciences. And I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about one of my favorite paleontologists, Franz Nopcha. And he was born in 1877 in uh, what is now Romania, but back then it was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And this guy had an absolutely fascinating life. We need a biopic about him ASAP, but for the time being, um, you're just going to have to make do with me talking about him very excitedly for the next five minutes or so. So, like I said, Nopcha, fascinating guy. Um, not only was he a paleontologist, uh, he also um, spent a lot of time in Albania as an ethnographer, like getting to know all the mountain men. There are numerous photos of him uh, dressed in traditional Albanian costume. Um, he, yeah, like I said, spent a lot of time like, recording like stories, folk tales, like myths, and the history of Albania. He became fluent in all the Albanian dialects and he very nearly became king of Albania once it uh, got its independence from the Ottoman Empire. Now, that's not quite as far-fetched as it sounds because the European powers at that time were looking to install um, a nobleman as the king of the new country of Albania. So why not choose somebody who knew the language and had, a, had spent a significant amount of time there? Um, Nopcha said that he would simply uh, marry a rich American heiress to uh, bring in enough money to like, set up the like, court of Albania. Um, that did not happen in the end because they chose a German prince uh, to be king. Um, but despite his promise to uh, marry rich for the sake of Albania, um, Nopcha himself was very, very gay. Uh, he had a secretary uh, with him um, named uh, Bayazid Almaz Dota and he and the secretary went on motorcycle trips together all over Europe looking for fossils. Uh, he once said of him, uh, he has been the only person who has ever truly loved me and in whom I had full confidence never doubting for a moment that he would misuse my trust. And some people like to look at that and say, oh, like they were just best friends. It was a bromance. Um, and to that, I would like to add that Nopcha once named a fossil turtle Calicobotian Bayazidi, which roughly translates to the beautiful box of Bayazid. So that should put to rest any speculation as to what the nature of their relationship was. Now, aside from being an absolutely fascinating human being, Nopcha made a lot of really important uh, contributions to the science of paleontology itself. Uh, so the fossils that he found around his estate in Romania uh, turned out to be several new species of dinosaur that he named, and he noticed something a little odd about them. They were much smaller than uh, similar fossils that were being found at the time. One of the fossils he identified as belonging to a sauropod dinosaur, one of the big, famous, long-necked uh, dinosaurs that, of course, were gigantic. But this one was not. It was quite small. And he deduced that it was living on an island at the time. And later, he was proved right by geologists. So this theory of island biogeography that he put forth was really like, pretty ahead of his time. Uh, we also consider him to be one of the founders of paleobiology. So that would be like looking at these fossils as if they were living animals, like trying to reconstruct their biology. What would their behavior be? Can we tell apart um, male and female dinosaurs? He put forward several ideas about that, which turned out to be wrong, but it was really interesting that he was already thinking about that when nobody else really was. So he was looking at them the same way that modern paleontologists do like in the early 1900s, which was pretty exciting. Unfortunately, though, his story does not have a very happy ending. Uh, with the fall of the Austro-Hungarian Empire after the First World War, he lost his standing um, in society as a nobleman. Like He was a baron of Romania. And uh, with that, he like, really lost his ability to like, conduct the science he had been conducting before. 
He was forced to sell his fossil collection to the Natural History Museum of London, and eventually he was left destitute and in very poor health. So there's a lot of specula uh, speculation about like, what exactly he was suffering from. Some people who have read um, his letters and diary entries uh, suspect that he might have been suffering from bipolar disorder, but of course we'll probably never know exactly um, what was plaguing him at the time. Um, but what we do know is uh, how it all ended. He uh, put a sleeping, like put sleeping pills into uh, his boyfriend Dota's tea, and while he was sleeping, he shot him, and then shot himself. And in his suicide note, he wrote that this was all due to a nervous breakdown, and he shot Dota, like intending to kill himself later, um, because he didn't want to leave Dota alone. So that's the very tragic ending of the tale of Franz Nopcha. Um, but I'm telling the story today because uh, Earth Sciences has been kind of traditionally viewed as this very like hyper masculine endeavor, like oh like you know big muscular like buff man like swinging the pickaxe and like you know finding the fossils like you know man versus nature all that. But we do have a lot of really interesting queer stories in Earth Science. We just have to do a little bit of digging to find them. But luckily, as geologists and paleontologists, digging is what we do best. So thank you for listening to my story.